Welcome back to another episode of Swans Cast podcast. So we had a week off, uh, been a little bit busy uh, in work and all the rest of it, but we're back this week later than expected, but we'll get the episode out nearly the end of the season. So I wanted to talk about a couple of the games that we've missed before the season actually does finish, because I'm sure there'll be a lot more to discuss after that. So um, I'm joined by Lee once again. Welcome back, Lee. And Hello. Alex made his uh, return after a couple of <laughs> couple of weeks. Oh, months Again. maybe. I don't know. Okay, last, time, <laughs> last time you were on was, but um, you're back, and that's the main thing. Um, so yeah, how's uh, how's uh, how's your week been, Lee? I know you've been pretty busy. It's your fault that we're late, really. So I'll just yeah. throw you under the bus. But well, um, work work has nearly killed me off. <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, it's been a good couple of weeks. So I turned thirty, the big three zero, in the week. And, yeah. uh, is that why you went uh, to Tenby, is it? Yeah, sort of weekend in Tenby, which was good. Um, yeah, that was good, jealous. to be fair. Just loads of food so and just jealous. drinking, seeing on my <laughs> 20s in style. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's been, uh, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been a good couple of weeks, to be fair. I went to watch, uh, went to watch a couple of the, the finals day in the millennium for the rugby, which was quite good. I had my birthday celebrations, weekend in Tenby, can't complain. It's been good. Always enjoy a trip down to Tenby. Uh, yeah. Alex, what about yourself? What have you been up to? Lots of random stuff. Uh, training as a rock climbing instructor, working, just all sorts of crap. That's what you <laughs> did. Uh, you did. You did Penavan, didn't you? And uh, Snowden, yeah, actually. No fair play. Two in two months, but it's probably going to stop for a while. <laughs> I really want to do the like the Welsh three peaks, like do Penavan, Snowden, and calorie dressing. Like, I would say a day, but. It's not gonna happen, but maybe like a week or something. That'd be hell of a day. Uh, there's a Wales Peaks challenge, isn't there? Yeah, I'd like to do that. So there's one actually coming up very shortly. We did uh we did the coastal walk from um from Tenby to um Saundersfoot. And that was yeah, that was too much for me, I think. <laughs> Longer than you expect, isn't it? Yeah. We thought we did it. We went like we went like on the roadway. Because that's where maps took us, but then we wanted to do the coastal walks with the coastal walk back, and I was like, "Yeah, we couldn't have done it there and back." So it was, yeah, it was carnage. It's, uh, it's only like two minutes in the car as well, which is, uh... yeah, it's a good walk though. Because did like obviously it takes you round the coast and back, but it was, yeah, it was good. Yeah, well, ten B is good. That's where myself and and Nia got engaged. So yeah, so. Well Obviously, we go there. We tried to go there like once a year, but um, <laughs> well, yeah. So let's get into the video then. So yeah, busy weeks, but um, but but well, is it busy for the Swans? I guess like they're a little bit on the beach, and there you could say uh, they had a little bit of a good end to the season, but now it's kind of fizzling out a little bit. I think, but we'll we'll discuss it. So first of all, before we get there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are pushing on. We're getting uh, some good momentum. The last couple of videos, getting the new. New people into the community, new people into the comments and uh, into the discussion. So we'd like to continue that. So um, please subscribe, comment uh, your thoughts on the stuff we talk about in the video. And also you can interact with us mainly on Twitter, where we're most active. But we also have Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Just type in Swanscast or Swanscast Media and you should find us on uh, all the different platforms. Uh, we do need to start posting some more on some of the other ones, but trying to juggle it all around and, and get stuff out there. Um, I got a question though. Perhaps everyone can sort of answer in the comments. I thought it was a good thing to maybe start doing at the start of the video. We'll chuck a random question out there, see if we can get a bit of discussion. Um, one that came to me randomly earlier. Don't know why. I think it's because you told me about getting beers on the way home from work. <laughs> but I got a question, and it is: if you could choose any beer or like cider or alcoholic beverage to have on tap at the Swans. Like oh. you know, available on tap in the uh, in the concourse. What would you choose? Oh, so absolutely great question. That is, come back to me. Are you putting us on hold? No, oh, I can't. Alex, what would you choose? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I guess some sort of cider. Yeah, uh, probably or whiskey. <laughs> you wouldn't get but whiskey behind the uh... tap. Oh yeah, why not? Pint, pint oh, of whiskey, let's go. <laughs> probably be paying off your mortgage. For, uh, to, yeah, to buy That's that a great well. question, Izo. I love that. 
Um, I've got I've got a top three beer for me. One of them is Camden Pale Ale, which is what we're sporting this evening. Um, and then I like the two Beaver Town ones, so Neck Oil and Gamory. When I went to the Spurs Stadium, they had Neck Oil on tap, and that was good. So any one of those three, and I. I'd be happy with that. A little bit windy then. Yeah, any any sort of IPA, I'd be happy with that. They haven't got any IPAs. They've only got Prava or or Guinness as a and a, and a cider in the stadium. So I think they do need to get an IPA in there. Oh, they don't have that where I am. You go to the lounge, you the Riverside lounge. Yeah, I go to the lounge before the game, and I think yeah, it's only Prava and Guinness, Carlin. In all the like, you know, the food stall things. I don't yeah. think they have those. They have. Um... I don't know what beers to do actually. I have ciders with a bottle from behind. But... Yeah, like, Stroke like, Didn't they do a Carling or something? I feel like it might have been Carling, but like I said, I don't drink beers. So I don't know. Really get into me? I, I yeah. don't know either. I know they do do different ones in the in the bar. <clears throat> they need, I, I they do need to get. They do need a good IPA, I reckon. But like they, they should get one in there. But hopefully, maybe well. maybe someone's watching the video that can go and recommend um, something. To the to whoever makes the decisions in the catering team, I would like something. I don't know. I like cider, so I would say you know, like um, a Thatcher's would be nice on tap. Always appreciate a uh, cold Thatcher's. But let us know in the comments what you think. Anyway, so what is your go-to beer or cider or whatever that you would love to see on tap? Down the Swans. Um, and if you're listening on Spotify, feel free to tweet us the answers to your question as well, so we can get a little bit of conversation going. Maybe next week on the video we can talk about some of the responses to see how much uh see if we agree with what lee's saying there with his little indie <laughs> selection or if uh everyone's going in a different direction <clears throat> okay let's actually start off with the football talk now then so uh, we're going to look at a couple of topics today rather than look at details of the games that we've missed over the last two weeks <clears throat> but just to touch on the games that we have missed i think it's three games since our last video because we went to the red in away day and did the video just after that. So we had the draw against Middlesbrough at home, 1 0. Draw against Bournemouth at home, 3 0. And a 5 1 defeat to Nottingham Forest. So on paper, I guess like they are tough matches. So would you have taken draws with two of them beforehand? Maybe you would have, but then you don't want to get thrashed in the third one. So lots to talk about. Uh, kind of got a question that we might touch on bits from each each one of those games. And what I'm asking is, well, asking or, or saying or just a discussion topic. So we can score goals now. We seem to be fine at scoring. Goal scoring was a big issue for us last season with Steve Cooper. It seems now it's not so much a problem. We have found a way to be creative and get uh, goals. Maybe it's the fact that we've got good goal scorers. I don't know. That's what we can talk about. However, on the flip side, <clears throat> last year, our playoff push was built on a good defence. This year, it seems like we can't defend. So we can score now, we can't defend. Last year is the other way around. So what's what's happened here, basically, is uh, what I'm asking. And how do we move forward and how do we fix it? Lee, do you want to start? Um, I know we've had uh, I know we've had about two weeks off, but our like, WhatsApp group's been a bit uh, hot, doesn't it, on this? Um, I, I, I don't think it's necessary that we can't defend because i think like we've got quite a lot of clean sheets we're quite high up in the clean sheet record aren't we but my issue is like i think i haven't criticized russell martin a lot this season but i think in some of these games in the tail end of the season i do question is like his tactical ability can we say because i think when teams like it's all well and good when when we play when we play the football that we want to play it's great and we look absolutely outstanding and we're scoring goals but that only works when teams are set up to allow that to happen so when teams sort of change the way that they're playing then um so like red and changed it they were four one down um bournemouth had to change it because they were three nil down um and steve cooper said about it post match and after the last time they beat us in december like they're happy for us to they're happy for us to have the ball and then when they come at us we can't do anything about it we absolutely crumble and i think it's a tactical issue that russell martin doesn't change during the games which is quite worrying um 
because when teams just decide to come at us with two up front, three up front, and they just decide to attack us, we have absolutely no answer for it at all. And we've seen it throughout the season where like Sheffield United United beat us 4-0 and Hull beat us like 3-0, I think it was. When teams decide to absolutely just bombard us with pressure, we have no answer for it. And he doesn't seem to change it within games. Um so that's what I see. I think like going forward, sometimes we look absolutely brilliant. But like the Bournemouth game, for example, I, I can't think of many teams that have played Bournemouth off the park like that in the first the first half, especially. Um, and then when they decided to change it and bring Kiefer Moore on, um, decided to come at us, he didn't change anything. Did we play him and off the park, though? Well, not necessarily we play them off the park, but well, we were clinical, but like I, I wouldn't argue that we deserve to be 2-0 up at halftime. Well, on the balance of that specific game, I found it interesting that we actually only had five shots, three on target, and they had 24 with 11 on target. Do you know what I mean? So, like, it's uh, it doesn't seem like a game where you thought you were 3-0 up. If you if you didn't know you were 3-0 up, you would look at that and think, Jesus, got lucky to draw that. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but that was, it. That was yeah, in the end, because yeah. when they decided to bring players on and push players forward and we drop back um i just don't I just, I, it, and again i'm not like we got i got a caveat it again because you know what it's like you can't say if i criticize russell martin everyone's gonna say oh yeah you want him out i don't want him out at all because i think like he's been great for the large part like when we like obviously the football we've been playing has been great but i do worry about his sort of tactical ability within games and i've said it all season he doesn't change anything within games that Bournemouth game we were well against the tide we were three nil up but like literally we could have lost that game five three with the way it was going and that was the worrying part I just wanted him to change something anything I, I, I don't know I don't know what it was but you could just see it coming and after we'd been to red in I just remember look watching the game and I was thinking we're gonna lose this game I just didn't fancy us to win or even three nil up with the way the game changed to be fair, he messaged in our group at three one, saying we're going to lose. We're going to not. Yeah, I, you could see win. it. You could see it coming. We just absolutely crumbled again. Can I just say though, the Ryan Manning penalty? Mm, yeah, I think it is a penalty on paper, but we've had like ten of them rejected this season. This is the problem. So, it is. It was a penalty, but we've had so many of them turned down. It's hard to accept a penalty against. I feel us. a bit harsh that. Yeah, like. That helped them a lot, yeah. It's like I guess them it's like the penalty against the Reds in it's a lifeline, gets them back into it. Like um sorry, the penalty of Reds in was the first thing when they ignore that. Yeah, it was. Um it's it's it at three one, you still okay, they've scored one goal. But when it's three two, they only need one more at that point. It's it's a completely different picture. So I know they were already on to us, but we could have weathered the storm and if they didn't get that second goal so quick, it might have fizzled out. But Getting the second goal so fast after, regardless how it comes, like it's a bit unfortunate. But however, what I will say is Ryan Manning, I've been saying for a while, it always seems to be him. Going back to the defending and stuff like part of my topic and what we're gonna to touch on in this topic next is about the personnel. But Ryan Manning, like he gave the penalty away. I'm saying, yeah, okay, maybe it was a bit harsh, but he always seems to be the person that asks these questions. Yeah, not sure. Not sure if he's if he's the answer. Uh, no, I think you're right. I, I think you're right. Well, if you if you think back to when uh, Steve Cooper was in charge, you wouldn't play him. Like he didn't get a sniff. And if you think like how people say how defensive Steve Cooper was and how he built on a defense, and he didn't pick Manning, he struggled to get game time, didn't he? And the Cooper, yeah. so I think it speaks for And you've been, you have been saying it for weeks. And I think, like since you've said it, I've started to notice it more. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. He's a bit of a liability. Like he gives yeah, the ball away so. quite a lot in positions that he shouldn't. He's quite, he's quite erratic. He's so sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, sometimes I like it because I remember the Fulham game before he got sent off. He was like, he was giving that bit of physicality to like Harry Wilson. He was getting the mix. He was talking to him. I love and I love that side of the game. Got to back it up, though, haven't you? But you got to, you got to back it up, and you got it. And sometimes you got to just not dive in yeah. and do rash things. 
and and rash passing as well though he does quite often and it's led to a lot of goals conceded mm -hmm. like i know we get caught on the counter when we're pushing in certain areas of the pitch but quite often when he's given the ball away he's the one who starts that counter and he's out of position and i know it's a full team then has got to defend but just don't give the ball away because it's, it's passes that again rash erratic passes that when they come off it's like oh yeah well done he's tried something it's worked but maybe not when you're left wing back and you're in your own half of the pitch. Mm. Do you know, like it's 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 a risky one. Alid, so out of what you've seen of the Swans over the last couple of weeks or months since we last spoke to you, like what do you make on like, the now increased sort of like uh threat we have at the top compared to how the other end is a little bit more leaky, perhaps? I feel like we've gone, as I think you said, basically complete opposite. In, in a way, I feel we are much more exposed on in terms of the counter and I might touch on what you plan on going on to next, but I feel almost as if we need some more depth in the back four positions that are actually reliable um, or more reliable. Um, I, I think, you know, like Northern solid, but we need a, someone that isn't Bennett. Um, you know that. Well, Ben hasn't made the like, bench. Well, like well, yeah, exactly. But you know, like we need more depth. More. Kavango is now obviously injured, and who are we stuck with? Well, basically Latty. I think Burns is injured as well, isn't he? Yeah. So we, we haven't got the depth and the reliability and the people who are, I guess, good enough qual, not good enough quality, but. Suit sort of, style. Yeah, suit, suit our style to be able to keep us clean, essentially, and help us against those counterattacks that we're getting smacked by. Because when we do lose those balls and we get countered, I, I feel well, at least three of the goals against Bourn, uh sorry, against Nottingham, I feel were counters, just over the top balls in in behind our back four. Yeah, it comes, it comes like. They weren't necessarily in behind the back four either, though. Oh, they were just in behind you know, the midfield. Yeah. And yeah. then you face to face with the back four, and they're there running back, defending um, with no cover, really. But we push high up the pitch to me to try and control the ball. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Difficult one. I guess, especially when you're chasing the game, that's going to happen more often than when you're not. Like, it's always, we say a lot how important it is we score first. Um, oh, yeah. I know a couple of times recently, like the Reds in the Bournemouth game, we didn't hold on. But I think it was the other way around. We wouldn't have even got a draw. So, yeah, it's difficult. I think, though, with the defending, like the Nottingham Forest game highlights, we're going to talk about Steve Cooper later in more detail, but how ironic that they smashed us twice. But last season, we were saying how we couldn't score goals and we could defend really well. But he's managed to get them against us at least doing both. And yeah. all we said last season is we need a striker. But this, uh, but this, but this is this is the issue because I think, and I got to be careful what I say because, like, the, if we if we fast if we rewind back twelve months at this stage, everybody was crying like, "Oh my God, get Steve Cooper out of this club." He plays terrorist football. No, come on now. Oh, it was like a week later club? after we lost to Brentford in a week's oh, time. Sorry, yeah. Right. yeah, like a week's time, yeah. But oh my God, get him <laughs> out of our club. He plays terrorist football. But we had to come on here almost every week and try and defend him in the sense that, and this is this is my argument against Russell Martin, is he hasn't got that tactical sort of knowledge um, well, like Steve Cooper has, where... You play with the players that you got. We didn't have the players last year. As much as everybody cries, or oh, we had IU. Apart from IU, we had nothing else. And going he's not forward. Even a striker. Uh, and some of our most like potent attacks, we were relying on like Bidwell and Connor Roberts. Yeah. It's just like that's that's what we had going forward. So in order for us to get to the playoffs, he made a solid at the back. He brought in players like Ryan Bennett, made a solid at the back, and that's what got the playoffs. Now that he's gone to Forest. He's got good attacking players and he can play that football. 
and that's what people don't recognize. But then and that's still, why he still adapted to let us have all the ball against them, and, he, and they still yeah, exactly, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, but that's but that's that's a good tactical manager. He's a great manager because yeah. he said he said in his 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 interview after the game, he said we knew Swansea were going to have eighty percent of the ball. We were happy from to have the ball, and we know they'll gift us chances. And they were right, yeah. and they took every single chance they had. And this is what I keep. And, and again, I'm not saying I don't like Russell Martin. I do like him because I got to keep saying it. Um, I just don't tactically. I think sometimes it's a bit worrying. I think people discredited Cooper a lot, saying he didn't have experience. But I think when you compare him to Russell Martin, right? Cooper had a lot of experience at younger football level in big tournaments, but at that level, like the big tournaments for the level he was at, and he won the World Cup, didn't he? Um, I think it shows when you say he had no experience. Well, actually. Russell Martin went into the job with no experience straight from being a player. Yeah, not the Swansea job, the MK job, Dalton's job, but only a year and a half before he came to us. So, yeah, he is really early still in his managerial career. Cooper has had a lot more experience than Russell Martin did and has learnt a lot more and has been able to like study, I guess, a lot more because of the path he's had. So as much as it might have been his first, first team job, I think he had a lot more experience. And it's just, yeah. and that's what I think it comes with what you're saying. Um, doesn't mean Russell Martin's not going to get there, but I think no. like it's part of what we need to accept when we go down the route of taking these young managers who are up and coming. And I'm sure you're always you're always going to remember back to like Roberto Martinez, Brendan Rogers, <laughs> with like fondest of memories because of the success that those periods brought. But I'm sure there would have been periods under those managers that we were asking questions of how they've defended or the way that they didn't hoof the ball out from the back when we were under pressure and they've tried passing it around and they've conceded. And not not necessarily as much as what we do now, but there was definitely periods where we would have been asking those questions. Um uh, it's just it's just part of the game in it and it's, you just gotta like learn to deal with what you've got a little bit and have the the right expectations. But ultimately uh, there's definitely stuff to work on. Going into next season. However, we, we talked a bit about the defense and we're going to talk about um perhaps the personnel in there first. But we didn't really act. My question was like two tiers where I said about the defense and the attack. We didn't really talk about the attack, and that's kind of a positive. So I think it's good that we yeah, touch on that because we don't want to be just droning on about all the bad stuff. Um <laughs> but Lee, like I know you're worried about keeping perhaps some of the players involved, but let's not talk about that right now. Let's talk about that later on, maybe or next week. Uh, but yeah, the attack, he's got us scoring goals, which is something we've been crying out for for a while. Um, finally got strikers that can score, 20 goals, one of them. The other one's in like the mid-10s, is it? What do you think uh, of our attack now, like how, how we've well, turned that around this season? Well, I think he's found he's found the right formula going forward, isn't he? I think like with Perot and Oberfemi and you know, Patterson and now, we've, we, we look great going forward, but I mean, it's taken, it took, what, maybe seven months of the season to get that going. And I have well, no doubt. The that... season is now, isn't it? I would say, like, is it now? September we started, so like eight months or whatever. I mean, yeah, six, five, six months. Yeah, so you've got to, you've got to, you've got to factor in that I like the, those attacking players. I'd say maybe two of them are gone next year. So we're gonna to have to start I said again. Don't talk about that this time. <laughs> I know, sorry, I know, sorry, but I got, I got to look forward now because coming to the end of the season. But uh, no, no. Well, in all fairness, like second half of the season, well, not even second half of the season. I'd say since. I mean, I again, like everyone says, the attacking has been great. I'd say it's only been great since the Cardiff game, which was April, where we scored the four goals against Cardiff. Perro has been quite good all year, though, hasn't he? Perot has been good and, all and year. And Pat has had another yeah. better first half of the season. Like the first yeah, game, but, was good three. I know, but when we're talking about when it's actually clicked and we look good going forward as a unit, I'd say only from the Cardiff game onwards from April. I'm sure there was a little period before Christmas as well when we looked okay. No, nah, we had. Was it? it was the Cardiff game oh, yeah. in October and that week, and that was it. And then after before. that, we were rubbish. After we were rubbish before Christmas. Before Christmas, yeah. Um, Forest four one, Middlesbrough one nil, Reading three two, 
again, this is the, this is the, this is the question. I, like I, I said it a couple of weeks ago. Like, do you think we've had? Do you think we've had a good season, or has it been a really bad season with good moments? And I think it's been like an average season with a good week in October and a good couple of weeks in April. That's a bit yeah. harsh, but I think that's. Yeah. That's uh, what it's been this season. It's not harsh though, because if you asked at the start of the season, we made a video and we said we we're going to have an average season. So, yeah, that's true. What's uh, I know, but I want. Just... I mean, I was going to say. <laughs> go on, Al. You go. <laughs> I was going to say, um, it 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 has taken us obviously a while to get to where we are, but when you think about, we didn't have a preseason, and obviously we've. D- We've discussed this at various different points, and I'm sure yeah, you guys important. have in the recent. It, it, it is important because earlier in the season, it might have made a difference. Um, and I feel like, well, come, I'm looking at January right now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, January was two, uh, two draws, a win, and two losses. And then. Feb was four wins, two losses. So I, I feel like we've we we turned the tide com- in comparison to you know like December, like which I just read. Yeah, um, yeah we had the first half of the season was a lot worse than the second half of the season. Yeah, on the balance of it, and I think that's also down a little bit to Obafemi starting yeah. to score he he's definitely he com- compared to the start of the season he has developed in my opinion so much and the partnership between himself Patterson and Perot I think is almost where our attack is you know th- those front three players with the midfield behind um and the fullbacks putting balls through I, I think that's where it's come from Lee, I, I've just I've just been looking for our predictions table. <laughs> where we put the swans? I don't want to know. Uh, you Mid put table, the, eh? no, but I've just noticed so we put Huddersfield to be relegated. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, I'm thinking, all right, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, yeah, but the, but but again, I said this before. This is this is how poor the championship is this year. Mm-hmm. Like Cross literally, break. like. And no, no offense to the teams, because because we're not good enough to get into the playoffs this year. But like, you've got Luton and Huddersfield who are in the playoffs, and Sheffield United who were absolutely tragic in the first half of the season and going to be in the playoffs. And Middlesbrough, I don't think these are like good, like are that good this year. We had Middlesbrough in there. We had them sixth. Lit- literally, if we could have found our goal scoring form from earlier on in the season, we would have been playoff contenders, and we are not a good side this year. So we put us to be 12th and we are currently 15th. If we win against QPR, we could go up to 12th. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm just that's saying fair. That's, that's what we that's, expected. I mean, we, we, we nailed that's that. what we expected. But but going back to like the pre-season thing, so everybody says like we have another pre-season and I said as well we need a pre-season. But looking at the last couple of games, how does a pre-season affect that? I don't think... I don't think the goals we concede, the goals that we've been conceding, is not a pre-season thing. It's not a fitness thing. It's a tactical thing. Tactical, yeah. I think so. We... I don't see how a pre-season changes some of the goals that we concede. Does it give us more time to make those tactical decisions beforehand? Well, I think that I do disagree with certain aspects. I think the Forest game is not. Forest game is different. The Reading game, hundred percent. They ran out of gas at the end yeah. of that game. Hundred percent. 100 percent but after 65 minutes we didn't touch a ball hardly um yeah, exactly knackered and... yeah but that yeah but he should have picked different players then and played differently yeah, when we were four one up we should have played differently yeah because that was the yeah. bank all day weekend and he should have played differently that's fine that is fine and that is a different point and i agree with that point yeah <laughs> i do think the fitness has got a part to play I said it all season though, like in terms of the three games in one week. But if you look at our bench, I know what you're saying, but it's hardly anyone you can actually swap. Yeah. So as much we as don't what you're saying is correct, <laughs> who do you bring in? 
he put yeah. Con- Cameron Congreve as right back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, that's a criticism, but is it a criticism when he hasn't got the tools? Yeah, because well, no, because everybody's cry like somehow, m- like magically, somebody explained to me how Ryan Ben has become the scapegoat of our entire season when he hasn't played for six months. Have you seen the the boost he gets? I don't understand. He's played like, again. Abuse now. Yeah, when, I, I don't when he's made mistakes, you can call him out. Don't give him abuse. Like, yeah, but like season, literally, he hasn't played, and he keeps getting abuse now because yeah, apparently yeah. it's his fault that our season's been poor. Well, but yeah, like, if you think about something like the Bournemouth game, like the Bournemouth game where it went to three-one, you'd bring him on. He would deal with those balls coming into the box. Yeah. He'd deal with those balls coming into the box. Well, and the same with like, injured, or is he just like just? Nah, I think gone. he's not. He's not playing him now, and he said he's going to leave at the end of the season. Same with the Reading game when we were four-one up and it went to four-two, and the ball started coming into the box. He's the perfect player you bring off the bench to to stop that. And I think I there was the word behind the scenes, and that's why he's just not there. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. I think that's where it is. But the Bournemouth game was crying out for it. They brought on Kiefer Moore, and we made him look like Messi. Yeah. But if yeah. you plant Ryan Bennett on him, he probably doesn't lose a header against him. Yeah, no, that's fair. But like, if there's something that's happened, we don't know who to be. So yeah, no, it, like, it probably is that. To be fair, yeah, I'm sure he has brought him on as a sub before, so maybe he would have done it. But like, he's got Felton, which he, he hasn't really been his biggest fan all year. Yeah, and Cham is apparently still not fit enough to start games. Ogbeta, I mean, God knows what's going on there. Corey Smith. <sighs> Mr. Utility Man who's leaving at the end of the season anyway. Kyle Joseph <laughs> can't buy a start to save his life. And Patterson, I think, was not fit enough to start against Forrest. And that was the bench. So I just don't really know where the rotation options are. I mean, you start in camp. He, where did Concrete play? Because I thought he played right back. Was he right wing back? Or was he on the wing? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Because on the radio, they seem to think he was deeper, but uh, on, on the sofa score here now, it looks like he was playing like right forward. But I, I don't know. They played with, for the back. Well, I don't, I'm not sure what they did. I was say, with Ogbeta, how do you say his name? Is it because he's so young? But then when you look at Perot and, uh, and uh, well, half the team, really, it's, it's not an age thing. Don't know what it is. You don't even get in the team Does he, injured, so yeah. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, is there something else going on there as well? I don't know. Like, you know only, we'll answer, only speculate, isn't it? <laughs> the only way we'll answer this question is if these problems are still persistent after he gets pre-season in the summer. And then, fair enough, if they are, then uh, he's you know that's it in there. Like, he's got to find another way to deal with it and. Um, I think he'll be he'll be on the furnace a little bit more if it's happening again after the summer. Like he said all along, give us till next year. So now we need to see the action. But it does depend on what happens with the the turnover in the summer as well. So that's what I was kind of going to touch on as the last part of this question. So we have like where exactly in the defence do we need to sort of make changes, bring people who goes and who, who do we need to bring in? Like it's uh, it's going to be a bit of changes here because it looked like it was a well stocked area centre back and now it doesn't anymore. Oh. <laughs> just... Obviously, Bennett's going end of contract, right? Yeah, Bennett's going. I don't, don't know if he's expired or if he's just going on a free. Cabango's currently injured, but there'll probably but... be interest there. Yeah, God knows about Latty, but I, I would say. If you can even class Latty as a, I don't think he's going to go. I think he'll keep that road, yeah. Um, but I'd I'd say definitely another centre back to sit along Norton if if that is Norton's new position. I th- I think he's taken to the role quite well. Um, yeah, I think Norton's going to stay there, but I think they're going to want to phase him out. Yeah, the no, worrying thing is like we keep day. getting yeah we keep getting one year deals for Norton. Like when yeah. when is he going to decide to just stop playing? How old is and it's Norton? worrying because how good has he been this year, Norton, in that position? He's been he's probably deserved more He's'm... than a one-year deal, but the club yeah. obviously doesn't want that overhanging over a player of that age. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah then, so... then again, we have Bennett, who's a year younger, but arguably but less I... fit. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I said this earlier on in the season. I don't know where... 
I don't really know what we need. Like, obviously, we need something, but I don't really know what what we need in those positions. Like, we no done, obviously. Yeah. yeah we well, look, look, the, the, literally, the, the perfect scenario is if you had Kyle Norton in the middle with uh, Gahey and Rode on the other side. No, I'll tell you what we need. That would be... That would if be Norton is there, he needs, we need two centre-backs who can play with the ball and head the ball. Roden and Gwehi. So maybe it's known <laughs> Cabango and one new one and somebody that can slot in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely need, think we need more depth. There. We need another left back. Yeah. And we need, so, but, and we need the But again, you right touched back. on it. What what was our sign in with Ogbeta? Why hasn't he played him? Yeah, and yes, that was my, that's what I was trying to get on with, with mentioning him a couple of minutes I mean, ago is why hasn't he played? Why has he been Prioritizing. Am I right in saying that he's only come off the bench once against Blackpool twice, away? Is that the only time? Twice, twice at most. Yeah. Why? Like, why hasn't he played him now? He hasn't played for. He's any... he's been sat on the bench since Cardiff. This is but this is this was this was what I've been saying. Like, he keeps going on about next season, next season, oh, and everybody says, "Oh, next season we're going to be like prime Barcelona." So why hasn't he started playing these players for next year? Are are they good enough? I think maybe he's not good oh, enough. Yeah. Maybe he's come here and he's not good enough. Maybe not. Who knows? But um, I think we need another left back and either one or two right backs, depending on what happens with Christie. Yeah, I think we need. Oh, and Christie's like Christie's awful now, isn't he? Because he had one bad game against Forest, so he's been great all season and getting all the praises. But he had one bad game against Forest, so now he <laughs> needs to go and leave forever. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that um, did, the, the debacle for that first goal. Oh. On that. Yeah, what was How that? How does that even happen? How does that even happen? Like the goal crossed the ball crossed the line. Yeah, so I thought goal line line technology is watch will vibrate and say go. Yeah. So how does he get himself in a position, the referee now, where he he's given card. a penalty, <laughs> sent Christie off, and then. Had to go and speak to the linesman for about five minutes before reverting the penalty, reverting the red card, giving him a yellow card, and then giving the goal. How does he give a yellow card? What's he giving a yellow card for? Hand for. Yeah, exactly. How is the hand the ball ball the across the? Did he act? Is there an angle of it where he's actually visibly handballed it? Yeah, he because... pulls it out with a goal. He does pull. Oh it yeah, out. he does like try and shift it out of the goal, doesn't he? With his arm. What I'm right. saying is like. If it's a goal, it's not a ball because it's out of play. Yeah, so you can't book it. Well, well so whatever happened, they, whatever happened, they got it wrong. Ball, it was... yellow card, then it is a red card in that situation because yeah, yeah, yeah. The handball hand to be a bucket yeah. needs to be given before it's a goal. So if you're saying he's handballed it before it's a goal, then you can't give the goal and you give a red card and a penalty. But if you've reverted that, you can't give a yellow card as well because if you're saying the handball af- happened after the goal. Then it's out yeah. of play, so he can pick the ball yeah. up and go to the kickoff. So how can he give a handball? Yeah, hundred percent. Because he he kind of does like the. Was that not kind of using VAR? Because technically, he can't reverse that red card. Once he's given that red card, he has no VAR. He can't reverse that red card. The linesman told him it was a goal, didn't he? So... Yeah, but he can't. He can't reverse that decision. Technically, he can't reverse that decision. Okay, we'll he's given that red card, he can't reverse it. Maybe because it's a goal. Uh, the argument is that the red card... But then that's why the yellow card doesn't make sense. But I guess the argument yeah. is the offence that he's been sent off for happened when the, there was no play because it was a goal, yeah? So yeah, how can he be sent off for that? But then I can get a yellow card for it either. So yeah. it's just... It's absolute yeah. balls up. Carnage, um, carnage. But I just don't understand how the watch hand vibrated straight away and said goal, and none of that should have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Because when the you funny, saw the, the replay, fun. they showed the goal line technology. Ah. So I don't know how accurate this source is, but I did a quick search, and um, it states that a referee can change his mind or decision, being that play has not been restarted. Yeah, I thought that was. Because I don't you know how accurate that is. 
you wouldn't have to have VAR to be able to do it. If you can overturn it with VAR, the rule will be you can overturn it if if no player started. I think that is that's when you've stopped it, made the decision, you have to make any overturning decision. It's like when you overturn then, a goal, yeah. isn't it? When you give the goal and then all of a sudden you don't because of offside. Yeah. Really, it's it's no different. But um, I still don't get how we didn't get it right with goal line technology. I was the, well, this 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 was this was when I was doing the walk in Tembe, and uh, I had a notification on my phone. It was red card Christie, then it was own goal Christie, then it was yellow card Christie. I was like, what a mare he's had in two minutes. <laughs> Because <laughs> well, yeah. I wasn't watching the game at the time, I was just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> Player of the season by a mile. <laughs> yeah, no, he had an own goal, a red card, and a yellow card in thirty seconds. The only other thing I wanted to point out from this game, because I think it's worth pointing out, because we are we've talked about a couple of players there that have had unfair criticism or criticism for the sake of criticism because they've had a couple of bad moments. Yeah, you mentioned Bennett. Yeah, he's been poor sometimes when he's played, but he hasn't played for a while, so why is he still against it? You mentioned mm-hmm. Christie, he's had one one bad game and it's piling on him. I thought Downs had a shocker against Forrest. Everyone said how, how good he's been this season. So let's call out you know, it just doesn't mean he has to pass. He had he was uh, for my uh, my opinion, he was at fault for three of the goals, the last three. Mm-hmm. Um so the first one was with his Sturridge's second, where he just goes sliding in quite um, recklessly, which, okay, if you mix contact with the ball, it's a good decision. Problem is, if you don't, our it was literally a four-on-two against our centre-backs. So I think this, the more mature approach to that is to just kind of like run, close the angle off to our goal, try and slow him down and allow the rest of the team to get back into a more defendable position. Or at least make him pass the ball earlier, and again slow the play down. Ultimately, that would have been the more benefit. They might have still scored anyway, but as soon as he's on the floor and missing him, it's literally a four on two. Yeah, uh, and I don't think the defenders in that situation can really be blamed. Uh, the second one, the crossbar, the, the cross, yeah, the crossbar, and Fisher is a little bit at fault for this as well. If Fisher goes up to try and knock the ball over, he misses it. Fair enough, that's fine. But he lands in the goal and kind of like switches off. The same time Downs is like looking at the ball up on the crossbar. I kind of like, all right, this out is done. And then it bounces back in. And obviously Surridge is so alert to this. He's on the ball straight away. And then it takes like three seconds until Downs realizes like, well, actually, I still got to defend you. And that's not the first time he's done that either. It was a goal that we were analyzing in a couple of videos ago that he did quite similar where he was in the box defending. There was a ricochet of some sort. And it took him a couple of seconds to like pick himself back up and realize I need to be alert again. So in a defensive situation, he's he switched off a couple of times, and that's worrying because he has slotted in a centre back as well um, as cover. And the third one was a ball over the top where he's literally in line tracking the guy who's making the run, and he just he's just too soft unless the guy runs through and any kind of passes the buck onto the centre back and slows down. Which again, yeah, you could argue they should deal with it better, but like. He was his man. That's the bottom line. And he's gone straight through and scored the goal. So, three goals. I know I know, 5-1 ultimately is a team result. It's bad. But if he didn't make the errors for those three goals, it could have still been 2-1. I mean, I, they deserve to win and batter us. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. But I just think it's worth highlighting that because, you know, there's a lot of talk about how good he's been. A lot of talk about Leeds won him and maybe he's going to go to the Prem. But that was a bad game from Downs. Maybe it'll put people off. I mean, maybe, maybe. Statistically, you're right. I yeah. I feel like statistically we had seventy percent possession, yeah. But Forrest still had twenty seven shots and seventeen on target. Exactly. Yeah. It means yeah. nothing. And like this possession thing. Oh yeah, we we have hundred percent possession every game. Great, but teams yeah. know how to play against us now. Mm-hmm. And I said this. This is a. This is probably a wider question that we've had before, where we said, where everybody says, "Oh, we need to go back to the Swansea way. We need to have eighty percent possession." Is that style of football not? Is that finished? Well, I I think that's one we could do in the summer. Yeah, like a full yeah. video on that. But like, okay, like Man City, <laughs> kind of play that football. Yeah, and they still have one Champions League, so. 
Yeah, but they yeah, but they just get teams that sort of sit back against Man City because of right, the, I just like to throw that in there. It was this quite it's probably still quite raw if you're a Man City fan. Yeah, but they, they just get teams that sit they you get teams that sit back against Man City, so that's why they have so much possession. And they have the depth though as well, like the squad. They also depth. have some of the best players in the world. Exactly, but team that's that's why teams sit back against them, which is why they have eighty percent possession. Because yeah. teams just park the bus against them. But with us, like in the championship, I can't think of another team that tries to play eighty percent possession every week now. I think that that style of football is maybe fizzling out a bit it now. just trends in there and it's probably just not the trend at the moment no exactly it's not the trend because teams teams are ha- like Cooper has nailed it nailed it on the head again because he said like we're happy for Swansea to have the ball and a lot of teams have come out and said we know Swansea can have the ball and they've beaten us so it's not really an issue anymore like the credit as long as you're good do, but they know that they can just capitalize on one or two of our mistakes and that's all they need to do yeah, it almost, but, yeah. I know we've gone a bit off, like off topic a bit, but going back to like the Downs thing, that doesn't really like fit the narrative anymore. Imagine that was, um, imagine that was um, Jay Fulton. Fulton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere. That Everybody, oh my god, you Fulton. Yeah. The end of it, like I've seen tweets. Or Smith, when he shouldn't one mistake. Or Smith, yeah, yeah. Or Smith. But when if that was Downs. Fulton or Smith, it would have been, oh my god, it would have been pictures of people circling him and getting the Monday Night Football Didn't pad out and finding where Smith out. was. Didn't see one next nah. to go downs. Well, he won't. He won't see it. He won't see it. And I just think, like, that's another thing. And maybe, like, because it's Friday night and I've had a few beers, I might be talking a bit rubbish. But our fan base at the moment is horrific in terms of the way we flip flop between, yeah. oh, he's great. Cooper and then he's got a bad manager. game. Cooper Russell out. Martin is great. Cooper's crap. Oh, Cooper that's the best. Cooper. That's Martin. the best thing this week. And that's the best thing this week is all the Swans fans like clawing back at Cooper, like, oh yeah, he's a great manager, but he didn't really fit. But then, like I said, twelve months ago it was like he's the worst thing that's ever happened to football. What do you Get mean rid he of him. Really he got us to two playoffs. How is that not? No, but I, I don't agree, but I mean like that's I've just seen so many tweets this week. I know, it's just silly, people though, saying it? Yeah, but people backtracking, people yeah. flip flopping, going, Oh, Cooper uh, he's a he's a good manager, but he just didn't fit the Swans. Whereas the same people twelve months ago were saying, "Get him out of our club. He's disgusting. Get rid of him." Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's yeah, it's horrific at the moment. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, but lots more to talk about on that. I'm sure we can do something in the summer, perhaps. Yeah. I did have a bit on Cooper actually. The next topic was to be about him and was he right to leave? Uh, he's pushing to go to the Premier League again. Is he kind of like shot down any? suggestion that it, it was him like i think he has personally give him the tools and so. he's delivering every time yeah he's had like 100 percent record of finishing in the playoffs and the championship and obviously we want to say yeah well you didn't go up but you got to get there in the first place haven't you to have the chance they could have easily if he had started the season of forest they would have been first or second so yeah, well, let's not forget, he took over. He, when he took over, they were seven games into the season. He had the one point. Yeah, at last. And season. they were literally one game away from automatic promotion against Fulham and Bournemouth, who basically bought the league. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the second part of that topic was, do Swansea fans give him enough respect for the job that he did? But I think you've just no. kind of touched no. on that. Uh, not a chance. Well. Not yeah, a chance. I think, um, I think hindsight's wonderful. And when you've seen... I think the season's been put, you know, do you know what? It should just be an eye opener of a season that it's not always the grass. We like to say it when players leave, the grass isn't always greener. But well, maybe we've had a dose of that. Yeah. And, and like, like I agree with you, I'm not unhappy with Russell Martin. I quite enjoy watching his style of football develop. But, you know, we are lower down the table since he's come in, which isn't necessarily all his fault. Maybe it was that Cooper was massively overachieving. And the Russell Martin is just doing what should be done with the players available. But then that's where you should be giving credit to Cooper because if he has massively overachieved twice, then well done. And he's done it with Forrest again. And we said this. The managers of Forrest had the same tools and battling relegation. So we said this Cooper Cooper wins games. He knows how to win games. He's a tactically good manager. He knows how to win games. Russell Martin has come in and he plays the style of football. But this is the this is the biggest argument you have, isn't it? Do you want to win games and play not so good football? Or do you want to have 80% possession, 
and not win games. And that's what we've got now. And that's what everybody said they wanted last season. They said, oh, I'd sacrifice getting in the playoffs to play good football. And now, and now we are playing good football and we're like 14th in the table, 15th, 16th in the table. That's what you've got. So what do you want, isn't it? It depends what you want as a fan. Can I also say James Garner, someone that we were linked with in the past, under Cooper, has been absolute quality at Forest. And he yeah. can take a corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I put a new section in that I think we're going to try and include every week, depending if we have the tools for it. But a couple of fan questions or talking points that I've taken from previous tweets or YouTube videos. So we got, first of all, we got Andrew Hughes commented on one of our recent videos. Do you think Joel Perot and Flynn Downs are ready for the Premier League? Who's good? No. Alex, you can go first. I'm, I'm going to say if they would were to be bought, they would be bought by one of the lower half of the teams, I think. Um, I don't think... I, I feel like Downs is like sort of... I mean, Joe Allen ended up at Liverpool, didn't he? But yeah, I feel but like... We did go up. Yeah, anyway. that, yeah, that's true. He had a folio in the Prem, than he, Joanna? Yeah. I was going to say Downs, I don't think he is as quality as Allen was, if I remember correctly. I, think, uh, I don't think they're the same sort of player, though. But yeah, that's true. Not but when Allen was sold, anyway, he wasn't doing. Maybe he became more mm-hmm. of a, like, sat back more as he got older. But I think when Allen got sold, he was a little bit more box to box. Yeah, true. a bit more attacking. Like we had Leon Britton next to him, didn't we? Yep. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, I w- go on. Uh. I feel like pro would happen like Boney did. Maybe. I feel like he'd be bought and then wasted. <laughs> Just be a bench warmer. I think McQueen is a bad at this age. But... Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, I would say I would say no to both Premier League at the moment. 100%. I think Peru has got a chance to be to make it more than Downs. Well, it depends what team they go into. I think he's too. Lot. They're too young. The two, both of them are too young to go. I, I just think, think I... Peru, with his natural finishing, he just needs to be made comfortable. And if you get him the opportunities, he's going to take them. So it's a fifty-fifty for me with him. Where like, if he gets put into a team like uh, who is linked with him, Leicester. Leicester. If he gets put into a Leicester under Brendan Rodgers. And and they give him opportunities and they're having a good season. I think he'll do well. But if he gets bought by Leicester, who had a bit of a season like this year that you know was a bit hit and miss, maybe you could go missing a little bit. I yeah, I, I don't think he's ready yet with his age. I just mm. I I think it's too soon. Okay, he's a, he's had a fantastic season this year, and I fully expect him to not be here next year. Um, but I think he would benefit from like a move. Which would hurt us, but if like a team came down now, like a Watford or a, uh, I don't know, a Norwich, or Everton. like if Everton come down, I think you would benefit from a move to a club like that for another year in the Championship and go up with them. I think that would suit him better than going to the Premier League now because we've seen it before. Like Joe Roden going to Spurs was the worst move he ever made for his career. Feel like Williams I'm sorry, was the, but I know like it, but it bugs me when people are like, "Oh, Joe Roden should be starting for Spurs." He shouldn't be starting for Spurs. He wasn't ready to when he left us. He wasn't ready to play for Spurs, but he would benefit for playing for somebody like Brighton now, like under Graham Potter in the middle of the middle of the Premier League. If they bought Perot, I think he'd have a good year because they need yeah, a striker as well. Brighton, Brighton well, absolutely you, would be the perfect club for him. You can liken Perot to someone like um. Uh, what was his name? Ujoa, was it? Was it Leonardo Ujoa? And then he oh, went yeah. from yeah. Brighton to Leicester. That sort of player, I think, is pro. So I think if he went to somebody like Brighton, I think, yeah. That Brighton would be, would be that one would of work. the teams in the Prem that probably do good. Or one of the ones going up, maybe. Yeah. Fulham. Yeah. Well, Mitrovic and pro up front. <laughs> Jesus, I would, yeah, yeah. Well, you just get Mitrovic if he could play off Mitrovic as a target man and he just shoots from outside the box, like 
Hmm. Could work, but obviously we don't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, that's, that's hopefully that answered the question. I don't necessarily think Downs. Um, I Not mean, yet. Lower Premier League at best, and he'd probably be in a relegation battle. I don't think I said no. I just I don't, with um, Downs. I think he's great. I think he's been absolutely brilliant this year. But I wouldn't say like, oh my god, Premier League quality. He yeah, hasn't like he was being linked to replacing Calvin Phillips. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hot. No. 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 That's no, what I mean. Lower, not yet. Yeah, lower prem and probably relegation battle, but then that could really bring out a really good player. Then you know what I mean. So then then you move up. But yeah, whether he's yeah. ready to actually like go to the prem and stand out, I'm not sure. Big step up to make that. And the golf is maybe quite uh, one of his highest levels, I think. In a oh way. yeah, well, COVID like we said about the increased star again. Like we said about the championship being poor, like. Anything outside of like Fulham and Bournemouth at the moment. Yeah. But before before COVID, it was, I think, one of the best points in terms of like there wasn't that much of a gulf. No, but you know, you since should be again, it's gone completely the other direction because, and it is because of the money, because every club yeah. is a selling club now. As much as we don't like it, we are, other than the ones that get relegated and then they all go back up. Maybe if we came down one year later, it would have been better for us, but. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, second question then, William Morgan. Um, selling Peru and reinvesting in the summer may be a blessing in disguise if done correctly. So what do you think? Of Got me. Uh, I know we sort of mentioned <laughs> something similar in the video recently. So oh my god, right. So <laughs> I've been thinking about this, and they've come out today. Russell Martin's come out today and said, "Yeah, I got that up." That we that we're a selling club, and do you want me to yeah. read what he said? Yeah, go, yeah, go on. Let's start with that. Obviously, it's because the uh, the accounts have been reported. Yeah, yep. Pre tax loss of four point six million, which isn't that bad when you compare to a lot of the league. No, just for that's context. not bad. That's um, not a problem. But it's still not good because it's still a loss. Yeah. Um. So Russell Matt was asked if. Selling to buy players was inevitable, and he said, "Yes, I don't think there's ever been a question about that. Uh, the club has to find a way to be sustainable with the size of club we are. Everything we have, the only way to do it is to be supported by someone who wants to put their own money in, and to do that, which obviously we don't really have that. Yeah, they're not really putting their own money in." They, they keep the money in the club, they don't put the money in, is what he's saying. Whether mm-hmm. you agree with that, I'm not here to discuss who thinks what's getting taken where, right? I'm just what he's saying. Um, Martin Ad, sorry, no, yeah, I've read that bit. Traditionally, that has been the way it's done and also causes a huge amount of problems for football clubs when the person decides they no longer want to put money in. I think that's a good point. So he's saying, like, even if they were putting all this money in, if they decided just to pull the plug, maybe you'd look at. Mike Astley and Newcastle as a big example, mm-hmm. it can go horribly wrong and mm-hmm. get a lot worse very quick. So that's where the focus on sustainability is important. And there is some form of credit due that we haven't been in a worse position since we come down where we could have been, like others have been. Uh, Derby County, just look at them for a recent example. Um, yeah, We were aware of that when we were brought into the club it's probably the reason that we were brought into the club to improve the players here and add value to the squad we did our mk dons a previous club to do a good extent uh to a good extent and help them out through a difficult period financially and just again for more context they are now in the playoffs this year so you could argue he's perhaps trying to argue they made foundations there they did make a couple of good sales like celtic bought that o'reilly didn't they um yeah they're a lot better off and now they're pushing to come up I'm pretty sure that this is one of uh, one of the reasons why we were a proposition for this club to come in and lead the team in the first place. We were well aware of that. Every club outside the top four in the Premier League is a selling club, if that's what you want to call it. So it's just saying, I guess, like everyone's in the same boat to an extent. However, you've got to argue the parachute payment clubs in the championship don't really have to sell. I mean, they sell their stars when they get relegated, don't they? But but then they just nick everyone else's stars at the level that they're in. Yeah. So, 
Um, we don't know how much we have yet. We know how much we need to try and bring into the football club, whether that is through player sales or through more external external funding. I don't control that. I cannot control that. There's absolutely no point in me worrying about it. We'll be ready for whatever happens. If a player leaves, we are ready. We have a succession plan for every single position and every single player. I guess that's, that's interesting. Hopefully this, uh, there's some good names on that list. I guess that is why we can stay calm in the midst of the noise and the chaos of the summer transfer window. Um, we've lost Lee. Kind of. But we'll carry on. I, think I don't know if he's <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know what you make of those comments. Obviously, it's been a lot of talk for a while, pro perhaps and downs. I think the two names that I've been mostly linked with with moves away. Um, so, say for for example, going back to the original question, if we do sell Peru, is this something that we should just think we should sell him to reinvest and get more players in to build the squad up, or should we be fighting to keep hold of him? I think we should definitely put up a good fight for him. But because going forward, I, I mean, they might say we have succession, but the partnership we have at the moment, and, uh, you know, we touched on it earlier, like, we are good going forward. It's it's the back end that needs to uh, be be fixed in a way. Yeah, but if, um, if, if like, some... If, if, if keeping Perot means you can't bring anyone in, but selling it means you can strengthen the back with three players. What's but the a, best ten, like a, a 10 mil isn't going to do much for us, really. You went, where's I, I 10 mil, think. though? Who says it's going to be 10 mil? Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, if if we sell him for a small amount, then I'd rather have just kept him. <clears throat> He's a 20 goal striker. So based on that, like, what was McBurney? I don't know. He had one season for us where he scored over 20 goals, or so I don't even know if he got 20. Um, do you remember how many goals McBurney got, Lee? Uh, he's close to, close to 20, wasn't he? Yeah, so if Perot's an over-20 goal striker, then the, the the fee we got for McBurney has to be the minimum, surely. What did we get? 23, wasn't it? Something like that? 20? 22. Because why would you get less? So that was both had one years. season. both had one season where they scored that amount of goals. I know McBurney was with the club a lot longer, but he only had one team, one season in the first team. Yeah, first team. Yeah, sorry, I, I cut off a little bit, so I'm not sure how far we got, but I, I was itching. Arrived. No, my, my chopsticks didn't arrive, but I did get another beer on the way while it was cut off. <laughs> um, no, I think um, we were saying about like the club, I think, in all fairness, like everybody says like spend money, spend money, but obviously like you look at teams like Derby, and that's not, that's not the way forward, so I accept that we're a selling club, but where I sort of start worrying is like i've said before like the last couple of transfer windows we just seem to sell players for the sake of it um and not not replace so we say about brentford like every year they sold their striker so they sold more pay and they just sold watkins and then they just kept finding that striker tony, so they did have a good yeah season. so then they brought tony in so they got a good succession plan but my worry is like i can accept that like Perot is not going to be here next year. Like there's not even point that like worrying about it. He's not going to be here next year. Um, but like you said, uh, McBurney went for what twenty million. He's, like he's, I think I think he's worth more than that now, especially in this market. It's, if you can if you can have a, a striker that scores twenty goals in the championship, um, that's your golden ticket to get promoted, isn't it? So if he goes to the Premiership, say someone like Brighton, like we mentioned earlier. If so, if they come in for him like twenty million, fair enough, that's fine. But I think if a team like, say Everton or Leeds get relegated now and they come in for him, unless they, uh, that, they were linked, yeah, yeah. Mm. But I think if a team that's coming down into the Championship wants him, then that play that price has got to be inflated to like twenty five million, I think, because that's your golden ticket to get back to the Premiership. Yeah, I think we should put up a fight for it. Certainly, I shouldn't. I don't think we should give. So. Yeah, yeah, if he's good, paid, yeah, you should fight for the wage, the the amount you want. But well, I don't know if fighting to keep him is worth. A fight. No, 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 not fighting to keep him because that's that's fine. I, like like you said, I accept that we're a selling club, and you, you know, business decisions. You've got to make that choice. 
But also, if we sell Perot for 20 million, do we then need to sell Oberfermi and Downs and get rid of four other players? And that's where my issue lies. He did say at least one, depending on the value, in a different quote, which wasn't in this interview. Um, So it depends who goes and how much is for, I think. Because he did, he also mentioned that, because they said about Perot and Downs again. And he said there are other there is interest in other players that is not really being asked about. So he's just saying like it doesn't have to be those two. It could be someone else. But then depending on who it is and the value, I guess that dictates how many go. And who, I mean Yeah. If it's if it's one Perot goes for twenty five, like you said, but then you can get five players into your team. Yeah. But ultimately that's... we might be a better team. Yeah, but but will they? They'll sell pro, and this obviously this is me being quite negative. But yeah. but what I can this this is what I can see happening. They'll sell pro for and not fifteen it. million. They'll sell pro for fifteen million. They'll probably sell over Fermi for eight million, and then 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 and then we'll have like somebody from League One for free. We'll have a couple of loan players. We'll have another free player. And then when you actually look at the squad afterwards, we're worse off than we were last year. Well, to be fair, they spent money last year. They bought Perot, they bought Downs, they bought... One million, two else. million. Yeah, but it's not just freeze, isn't it? That's what I mean. No, I know, but who did we sell last year? We got IU's wages off the books, Lowe which was probably Robert, about... Was only those two, really. Lowe and Roberts went, which covered Perot and uh, Downs. Well, they bought Obafemi as well, there we are. But he was free, wasn't he? No. He was, wasn't he? No, he bought. Or was he um, undisclosed? Yeah, I think it was over a mil. Yeah, so it was probably like it was probably like he cost three million. We'll pay you one pound for the next three million years. <laughs> They're all like that. These days, <laughs> all of the dealers are like that. It's just to keep the books ticking yeah. over, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, we'll have more debate on transfer yeah. stuff in the, in the summer. I'm sure as the news comes out. I'm sure there'll be other names linked. Probably see a little bit of a Mac Rhymes rumor. That's usually what comes up. Um, Cabango, I think maybe That's one. Usual. It'll be yeah, it'll be somebody that we don't expect. So we're obviously we were expecting Pro to go. Patterson, Michael. Well, quiet that, haven't it? Pat- well, I, to be honest, like I, I don't know if you boys agree with me, but I think Patterson's been like not as good since um, since the rumors came out. He hasn't done much since February. No, he hasn't done loads, but I think like he didn't do much before either, did he? Like in terms of other clubs, not no. to what he did in the first half of the season with us. Um, no, maybe the clubs that were linked with him and looking at him and like, oh, glad we didn't get him. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a maybe. tactical decision. I'm yeah. gonna play. I'm gonna play poorly for the second half. But of he's the had season. a bad injury <laughs> history, hasn't he? So when's the last yeah, time he did a full season in the first team? Yeah, he's had a few injuries recently as well, hasn't he? Like, he hasn't been yeah, I gonna, I'm sure I a lot that. in the last four or five games. Yeah. Um, there is also a statement from Jake Silverstein. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. I saw it pop up earlier in work, but I am ready yet. I think they're just talking about, again, the financial stability. and They're just cushioning and the blow for when they sell everybody in the summer. Yeah, perhaps. Well, after I haven't read it all. I'm not going to read it out now. Um, but if anyone wants to check that out, there is a, uh, there's something out from, uh, I don't know what he is, like the director, the club's supporters director, I don't know. He's, he's something <laughs> of a role. He, he's kind of like, the two Americans don't talk, but he does. Sort of. Yeah. Because it's not, obviously you've got Julian Winter yeah. as well, but um, he kind of represents... The, the, board. the Americans directly, I think. So they don't have to deal with us. But he does. He does that. I think that's kind of his role. Yeah. Could be wrong, but that's the impression I get. Uh, it's, it's annoying, though. Um, okay, so last thing on today's agenda. This shouldn't probably take too long, but uh, a little bit of uh, positive from this week. Obviously, they had the awards dinner. Uh, we did have a glance at the tickets to go, but I think it was full by the time we looked. It would have been a, it would have been a good night. Um, 
so yeah, end of season awards. So I've got the notable winners here, and then I just thought it'd be a little bit of fun. We can brainstorm quickly. We don't have to go into detail about it. I'm sure we'll do our own discussions about end of season, team of the season, and all the rest of it in the next couple of weeks. But brainstorming quickly. First of all, Academy Player of the Season was officially won by Cameron Congreve, which I guess is good, but I mean, he did play loads. But yeah, it's good. Uh, well done to him. Best Newcomer of the Season, Flynn Downs. Top goal scorer is Joe Perot. Uh, obviously, goal of the season officially Michael Obafemi with the first goal against Cardiff City won that. Player of the season Carl Norton, sorry, players player of the season that is. Supporters player of the season was Joel Perot, and Swan's personality of the year was Jamie Patterson. I'm a bit confused though because who votes for the best newcomer of the season? Because how can two newcomers win? One of them wins Newcomer of the Year and the other one wins Supporters Player of the Year. Surely, if a newcomer wins Supporters Player of the Year, then they're also Newcomer of the Year? No, but the Supporters Player of the Year is voted by the supporters, isn't it? So I, don't the the yeah, I, don't, I don't know who picks the other ones. Yeah, I don't think, like, I don't know who picks that. Maybe the players, mm. I'm not sure. Fair, maybe. So, yeah, that's what the official winners were. What do you think about goal of the season being Obafemi's first goal against Cardiff? Yeah, that was a beauty, wasn't it? With the play, yeah, I've got to be honest. And the, the importance of it. Oh, yeah, that had to be up there. I think that was my pick, I think. Fair enough. But let's do our picks now then. So, Academy mm. Player of the Season. Yeah, I think uh, Congreve is fair because he's been what? burst into the... Yeah, but what are the rules? Is this someone from our academy or somebody that's like currently in that setup that sort of steps up a little bit? No, I think yeah, I think it's just whoever has played well in the academy throughout the season because Congreve only started sort of making appearances on the bench after when Christmas. after Christmas. So he probably done so well in the academy up to that point that he detracted interest from the first team. So I think that's why yeah. he's got in there. Notable like shout outs to like Dan Williams. Yeah, Dan Williams. Actually, he's on a loan and he's so he's like it's hard to perhaps to give him the award, but I think he's made about the same amount of uh, appearances. It's just his were in the cup. And yeah. he got the goal. Maybe one less, but minutes-wise, he's probably played more because the cup or yep. whatever. But uh, all the same, that, maybe not after Congreve started the other day. But yeah, it's good. Well done, Cameron Congreve. Probably right to give him that award. Um, there's not awful lot of competition if you're looking at who's broke us through to the first team. I don't know whether you could include the likes of Kyle Joseph to Pens because obviously he was signed in last season. Does he count as someone in the youth team? But I guess he doesn't really play for them much. He was, was he bench. was in the youth, wasn't he? So, but he is now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's yeah. Ne- newcomer of the season. Yeah, I mean, pro has got to be in there and. Uh... And down, <laughs> they had to be the two, didn't they? They had to be one of them, too. Now, nah, I'll, I'll go in to throw a curveball here. Oh, my words are not coming up. I'm going to throw a curveball here. I'm going to say Oberfemi, and I'm not necessarily 100% based on his football, but it's just it's bad done on TikTok's class. Oh man, the, the TikTok. <laughs> Did you see the one recently from the awards with him and Jamie Patterson? Well, I have, and I saw it come up. Really I have watched it. Yeah, it's blooper one. They were arguing whether his um, touch against Coventry was an assist or if it was just a bad touch. <laughs> um, and there's actually a vote on that. There was a vote on. Yeah, it. they did a vote. Yeah, and I think it was an assist. I think he means yeah. it. Sixty-two point seven percent voted it was assist. Yeah, I, he definitely means it. I think he means it. But like, I, I, I you are right though. I think like his energy since. Um, since he started playing in the squad and he's seen his personality on like the TikToks and all the social media stuff, I think he's been great. And like, I think he's becoming a bit of a fan favorite quite quickly. I think, yeah. I think he's grown, as I mentioned earlier, he's grown and developed over the course of the season. Yeah, definitely has. Uh, goal of the season. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the two, the two best goals I'd seen all season. Well, three was either, Perot against Blackpool at home or yeah. the two Oberfemi goals away at Cardiff. I was going to say the Perot against Blackpool at home for me. 
Yeah, that strike was class. I was a screamer. Yeah, a screamer. Uh, although saying that, like Peru, um, was it Wolf against Redden was quite good. Oh yeah, that was a good goal. Yeah, literally top. Yeah. That would have been soccer AM top pins. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. But I like, like Peru's. Perot's first goal, uh, Pro Oberfemi's first goal, and is the fourth goal against uh, against Cardiff with brilliant goals. Yeah, oh, there's Cameron Congreve there. Well done, Cameron. Um, Can we talk about the, the badge as well? And that kit, I think I hope they keep that badge for next year. They're not going to keep it. Oh, they That's should, though. It's the best badge Cardiff. we've ever had. That was, I just don't think they're going to keep it, are they? No, I can't see that. Oh, that badge is the best badge we've had, though. I don't want to go back to the old one. That's like our maybe, original badge, like that. Maybe we should check a poll up on Twitter to see if people think we should keep that badge. Yeah, we definitely should keep that badge, hundred percent. Okay, so Swan's personality of the year. Yeah, I I would have given it to Obafemi to be honest. I got another curveball. <laughs> oh my! Whoever the admin is on TikTok. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Great shout. Yeah, great <laughs> shout. That person, I'm not sure what their name is. So, but um, if you want to come on the podcast, feel free. Ah, uh, great shout. Uh, I was uh, looking uh, back at some of the TikToks throughout the season. Some of them have been absolutely fucking gold. Uh, yeah, and they reply to so many comments with banter as well. It's just funny. Oh, they've been uh, great. Yeah, they are phenomenal. Fair play. That's uh, whoever social media manager at Swans. You're doing a good job. Um, yeah. Most improved then. Last one. I'm going to say over Femi. Most improved. Oh, I think the man on the screen there, Cabango, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my pick as well. Yeah, I think Cabango, I think. The first half of the year. I think Russell Martin deserves credit for what he's done with Obafemi. If they apparently they said you know he wasn't yeah. right at the beginning of the season to what he is now, but I think Cabango um, having to adapt from obviously we talked about the way the Cooper set them up to the way they play now. I think like the last it's a shame that Cabango got injured because I think he was uh, really coming into his own at the end of the season. So fair play to him. And at the beginning of the season, we said a lot of times, like, oh, I don't know if he can play in this team. I think he really struggled. Yeah, so what he was in the last, like, you know, three, four, five games, I think he's been brilliant. I know his goal against Cardiff. And, uh, yeah, I think he's been great. So, yeah, come on, go for me. Yeah, I agree. That's uh, my pick as well. I think I threw enough at him earlier in the season. And yeah. he's come back and answered all of those critics mm. and continues to improve. So fair play can only give credit for that. So well done to Cabango, I think, for this season. Some good positives come out of it, ultimately, even if we have finished in the middle of the pack. So, um, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, that's what I got for this week. So um, Can I, uh, can I one, one, one more thing? Yeah, I know we talked about my... Uh, remember I, we were saying for ages about the sign picture? I did get it in the end. For the double. Yeah. If you can see that on the screen. So it did come in the post. Yeah. I think in all fairness, as much as I say about um like Russell Martin, maybe tactically and all that, and we you know, obviously we can slate him like you know, we, we criticize all day long, but I think the one thing I will say is I think there's a good feeling around the club at the moment, like just with the players like Oberfermi and just having a laugh. And I think Russell Martin is really bought in, isn't he, with the fans. And I think there's a there's a there's a real like willingness for him to do well. Yeah, because he's proper bought in and he likes the fans. Yeah, so I will say that there's been a good there's a, there is good feeling around the club at the moment. Even though, mm. like obviously we can moan or yeah we've thrown away leads and we've had losses and whatever. But I think like nothing nothing would please me more for this manager to do well because I think he's proper bought in to the fans. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of positives that show that the players are on board with him as well, uh, or the ones that play at least. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, Grime signed yeah. a new contract again. That was massive. Yep. That's been uh, since he's yep. been here. He obviously likes what he sees because he was, by all accounts, gone as good as gone. And Cooper, um, yeah, you know, we, there was rumors that the players just weren't loving life under Cooper by the end. And whether that is because Cooper had checked out, which is something that some of the fans like to <laughs> point to the fact, you know, we don't know if he did talk to other clubs or anything, but I think mentally checked out after he didn't get given what he asked for in regard in the striker in January um, yeah. and in the summer. Like, he'd had enough. 
I know you had the thing with Pettersson getting sold earlier in the season. Like yeah, he was, due, he, was, he, was due to, he was due to be on the bench that Saturday and they told him yeah. not to put him on the bench because he'd sold him. So I think he'd mentally checked out and yeah, I think like maybe that rubbed off on the players and they weren't happy under him by the end and obviously we got the playoff final and whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah. after that, it looks like the players are back on board. And that's why I just wanted to mention that because that's why I think the whole Grimes signing a new deal was is so... Like it says what's going on because yeah. there was arguments all over Twitter about like we should have sold him, we should have cashed in, he's gonna go on a free, like yeah. we've done the wrong decision. People were literally coming at us on Twitter when I was defending the decision to keep him and not to sell him for an undervalued sum of money. If he goes this summer, we get a lot more for him. Oh yeah. And uh, and I think Russell Martin needs to deserve the credit for the fact that he's still here because yeah, he didn't have to sign that contract, did he? But um, he wouldn't have done it if he didn't think something was going to happen. Because mm-hmm. ultimately, we're in a better, worse position in the table than we were under Cooper, but he wanted to leave beforehand. So, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think yeah, I totally agree. I think <laughs> like Russell Martin's brought a good, like a, like a great energy to the club now. You can just see yeah. he's proper like like I said again. I've said it a couple of times now, but he's proper bought into like the club and. And and he's made the players buy in as well. Like how many how many managers would have just like chucked Obafemi into the reserves with apparently he had a bad attitude and all this and now look what he's been able to drag out of him um, at the end of the season. So I think yeah, I think he's got the capability. I think he's got the capability. I've had my criticisms of him, but I think going forward, um, I don't know. It's like it's, it could go either it could go either two ways, couldn't it? it could either. You know, we could either get promoted next year or we could be sacked in December. So Yeah, it's either gonna be I don't know if I don't know if they'll sack him in December if, if the seasons go in the same as they went this year. Hmm. I think they'd ride it out. Because why sack him if you're gonna want to bring him in? Even oh, if not it's the same. Want to no, go. no. But um, not if it's going the same as this year, no. Yeah, but I famous last words. I can't see yeah. it going worse. No, Personally. fingers crossed. Depending on the summer, on the transfer like business. I said it from the start of the season. If you split our season in half, like whatever the half point is, yeah. right? And you count the points from the first half and the second half. I said at the start of the season, the second half would be better. And I think it is better by a decent margin. margin. Yeah. I haven't actually done the stats, so someone's going to call me yeah. out in the comments. Um, but even look at our form. I know we just got smashed by Forest, but the last eight games before that, or nine games or something, we didn't lose. It was like four wins and five draws. If you do that sort of form all year, you're pushing for the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll hold on that in a minute because I like yeah. yeah it's been it has been better in the second half of the season in some aspects, but it's been worse in other aspects. So yeah, but if it's worse, but you're still not losing all them games. When yeah, but like problem, I, I mean, you can you can like manipulate stats. All the time, can you? So we were unbeaten in nine, weren't we? But in nine games, I think we won four or something like that. I think yeah, we won four. four. Games uh, in nine is yeah. nearly winning half your games. So yeah, I know we conceded like thirteen, like a forty-seven percent win rate for the year. It's not awful, is it? Yeah, I know we conceded thirteen goals as well in nine games. Yeah, but we also scored like that much. Not that yeah, many. No, not that. Not fourteen goals. <laughs> Yeah, we did. Oh, he's at Darby, least seven. one against Millwall, two against Derby, one against Barnsley, four against Reading, one against Millersborough, and three against Bournemouth. So yeah, we did. Yeah, and then we both the last. Yeah, okay, but then the last four games of those nine, we didn't win. So we didn't win in four games. It's like you couldn't, you couldn't just manipulate yeah, yeah, stats as much as you want. Have, you? Bournemouth went through a period where they didn't win in like six games, and they finished second. So then they lost yeah, them they all, won. actually. I was just saying. No, I know you can. No, but no, but you're right. You can, but you can manipulate stats as much as you want, and this is why it's not like it's it's not beneficial to look at it. But um, if you look at the start of the season, what's the first game? Was it Preston? Uh, Blackburn away. Blackburn away. Blackburn away. Um, Lost two one. We We had the. I'm trying to one two three four. Is that the league? No. Five, six, seven, eight. We we won one game in our first eight. 
So that's, yeah. I mean, I take the form that I just described over that any day, even if the issues are there. Yeah. 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 Plus, but I also want to. I was remember we dreamed no, I know. home to hell, nil nil, a home to Middlewall. They were just boring. So I yeah. think we've progressed a lot since then. We had lots. We have of, progressed. Uh, we have progressed. We have progressed. No, I can't say we're, we're we're not worse than we were at the start of the season. Um, we're definitely a little bit better than we were at the start of the season. But I just think I'm gonna just like play it down a little bit. I'm just not gonna get too excited yeah. about next season just yet. We do need to see what happens in the summer yeah. before we make an ultimate decision on yeah. it. Um, yeah. I just noticed we conceded seven goals to Redden in our two league games. <laughs> However, we also uh, we scored beat them by... 3 0 in the cup this year. So ultimately, we are the winners. <laughs> uh, let's end on that note anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the chant they were singing when it was 4 2 in that game. It was 4 2 just like in the playoffs or whatever it was. Oh, and the playoff final, yeah. Then they went and scored two. another two. So. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> uh... I'm not, I I'm just can't throw away leads anymore. I was done. I'm sure there'll be a couple more to come. Absolutely. Until until the end of football. Um, but yeah, I'll, we'll end it there. So thank you very much everyone who watched or listened, whatever, for this video. Thanks to the guys commenting on the last ones. Obviously, we talked about your comments. Hope you know the answers were all right. But let us know what you think about them. And give us some more stuff to talk about next week we'll try and include comments going forward i think it's a good way of perhaps uh including some of the interaction and don't forget as well to let us know what beverage you would like down the swans very intrigued to oh, see yeah. what people come back with on that one um, don't forget subscribe like the video helps us grow and reach out to more people can't understate the importance of people clicking the subscribe button and the like button it is really important so Really appreciate everyone that has done already and continues to do so. And we shall see you in the next video. So goodbye. See you. See you soon.